I'm now joined by Sir Jake Berry, former chairman of the Conservative Party, an MP who I know has got quite strong views about the Bank of England. Um, Jake, did you hear John Glenn there? He was trying to deflect any blame from Andrew Bailey. But what's your view? Is he to blame for this inflation rate being the highest in the G7? Well, good morning, Camilla. Look, clearly, I'm, and before coming on the show today, I was looking at the Bank of England's predictions just from 18 months ago, and their prediction was that inflation would be 2% now. It's uh, over 8% or 10%, depending on some measures. Look, the Bank of England has been asleep at the wheel. The United Kingdom central bank has acted far too slowly, and, um, and mortgage payers and businesses are paying the price. Andrew Bailey, is he just a sort of Treasury orthodoxy stooge? Should he consider his position? Well, Andrew Bailey is pursuing what I call blobonomics, which is the <laughs> sort of flawed economic uh, principles of the Treasury. And um, I, think, I think the problem he has is that every prediction he has made is wrong. So I don't want to get into predicting his future because I might fall into the same trap. Mm, but what do you think? Should he consider his position? Should the government consider his position? I think the government should be getting him in and talking about whether he has a plan other than just ratcheting up inflation or in, ratcheting up interest rates and uh, and mortgages on on households. And if he doesn't, then maybe um, you know it's time to look for someone else who's got a better plan. I mean, what are you telling your constituents on the doorstep? Because clearly they'll be very worried about their mortgage payments going up. They're very worried about their bills continuing to rise. I agree that we've had a little bit of a reprieve, haven't we, um, for our energy bills now over the summer, not least because it's so sunny we're not having to put on the radiators. But, I mean, presumably you are worried about the economy causing you to lose seats come 2024. Well, when I talk to people here in Rosendale and Darwin, Camilla, you know, one of the main things they are concerned about is this huge increase in mortgage rates. So I welcome the Chancellor's progress he made with the banks, enabling people to flick on just to pay the interest rather than the capital sum back for six months. I just don't think this crisis is going to be over in six months. And that's no. why I've been calling for a reintroduction of Myris, which is a tax cut for everyone with a mortgage or expanding SMI um, to, to people beyond people just on benefits to try and help families. Look, if you read in the papers today, Camilla, you will have seen that there's a potential 10% drop in property prices yeah. in the next 12 months predicted. That puts us on the brink of a financial crisis in terms of the amount of wealth that we have in this country invested in property. We absolutely have to act. And I don't think the approach, frankly, of Andrew Bailey at the bank or the sort of government wait and see approach is one that is serving my constituents. Do you think that the recent economic kind of calamity, the idea of debt being now 100% of GDP, the fact that the gilt yields are actually worse than they were under Liz Truss, has in some way vindicated Trussonomics? Well, I think everyone involved in Truss's government, including me, uh, you know, has to accept that the implementation of the plan left uh, a lot to be delight, <laughs> desired, just using the art of British understatement. But the view was within that cabinet is that Britain was sort of careering over the cliff and we needed to do a U-turn as quickly as possible. And that could be done by creating growth by cutting taxes. I still think that's the right thing to do. Um, I think there is a, a sort of managed decline approach from the Bank of England particularly, uh, with the thought that they have to push us into recession as the only way of Britain recovering. I believe in growth, 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 and that's what Liz Truss went for. It's a shame, uh, frankly, we just made such a mess of implementing the policies. Um, let's just move on to matters political. We had Frank Luntz, I believe, in the House of Commons last week. He addressed the 1922 committee. He basically said to Tory MPs, if you've got a majority of 15,000 or less, quotes, you're likely gone. Jake, I note that your majority is 9,522. Are you considering a career change come 2024? Well, I think when you've got a traditionally marginal seat, you always have to view every election with some trepidation. I'm selected here. I'm delighted to be fighting Rosendale and Darwin again. It's never an easy election here. You have to work really hard for people's votes. This is probably going to be the toughest election I've ever faced. I do think, though, if the Prime Minister does deliver on his promises, and I mm. hugely support his work, his sort of early identification as inflation as the greatest enemy of the United Kingdom, yeah. he does deserve credit that we'll see a swing back to the Conservatives and I hope and believe 
that the voters here in Rosendale and Darwin may, may, may just have one more roll of the dice with me. I'm certainly trying to persuade them anyway, Camilla. Um, one more question, actually. Bernard Jenkin, your Conservative colleague, has been described by other colleagues as a coward, according to a report in the Mail on Sunday. I know you're a fierce supporter of Boris Johnson. In going below radar and failing to address his own party gate scandal, has Jenkin been a coward? Quick answer, Jake. Yes. Right. Thank you very much indeed for that.